लेकिन हम जैसे बुजुर्ग लोग हैं सेवेंटी थ्री ईयर्स की हूँ मैं कोई अलग लाइन नहीं है कोई हमारे बैठने का इंतजाम नहीं है कम से कम पैंसठ सत्तर साल के लोगों की अलग से लाइन होनी चाहिए हम कहाँ जाए खड़े हो सकेंगे क्या पाँच घंटा कैसे खड़ी है वो चला जाता नहीं है पानी से क्या करें हमें हमारे पास पैसा खर्च नहीं करिए एक पैसा नहीं इतने पैसे लेके हम बैठे हैं Hello and welcome to News Click. This program with Real News. Today we have with us Professor C P Chandrasekhar, and we're going to discuss the recent step of the government of India to demonetize the 500 rupee and 1000 rupee notes, allegedly for stopping black money and terrorist activities, fake currency, etc. How does this actually square with the supposed aims of black money? Because, as has been widely stated, a lot of this black money is held in dollar accounts, and therefore it's not really held, as it were, in bank notes with under the pillow or in the cupboard and so on. So, how does this aim of black money control really square with what has been done? Well, the way I see it is that you know there are there are obvious assumptions which have been made. Which uh, I'm sure that even the government doesn't really believe. One, of course, is the assumption that you're talking about the fact that uh, the presumption is that black wealth, because it's not really an issue of black money, but because you're talking about the black economy, this substantially accumulated black wealth, that black wealth uh, is in the form of not of gold or even fixed fixed deposits or uh, you know investments in real estate and so on, but really sits in the form of money. Uh, currency notes particularly even of denominations like 500 rupees because you're talking about a black economy which is so huge that would mean that there's uh, notes buried across the country in order to be able to sustain that uh, the second uh, assumption which is being made is that uh, that whoever is generating this black black money uh, is uh, not keeping the money going i mean you know that that uh, the, the idea is that you, you you make some black money say you sell sell some property You get yourself a certain amount of black money, and you sit on it. You know that that's not the way the black economy operates. So once you say that there are transactions which are taking place on on the basis of uh, of uh, black money as opposed to black wealth, then uh, to the extent that you have money in circulation which may be originated as black or, or was black at some point of time in its life, that that would have uh, through transactions moved between the white and the black economy many times over. so if at all you're going to be able to think of anything which you can try and touch if at all it's really going to be a, a, an amount of currency let us say which has occurred as a result of very recent transactions if somebody has just sold even maybe a dda flat or something like that and has had to take a certain amount of 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 the payment in in currency because that's how a lot of transactions take place and has not yet put it into circulation then possibly you know you're going to affect such people but they might not be the principal holders of black wealth and the principal originators of black black money in this economy that's a interesting point that essentially what would be what who would be affected are those who quote unquote tend to hoard black money due to one time transactions they might have made and then liquidated this over a period of time but the big quote unquote black money or black wealth today is really foreign transactions over invoicing under invoicing sending money out to hawala channels and as we saw the the panama papers show uh, that there's a huge amount of uh, foreign uh, there's a huge amount of wealth being stored in the so called uh, tax havens which are also in circulation they're also yeah, yeah, sure. not that they're hoarded over yeah, there yeah that's that's an important component but i i i i would suspect that uh, even um the the sort of rupee black economy and therefore rupee black wealth is quite substantial and you know which hasn't actually been transferred to swiss banks or you know to the cayman islands or wherever and therefore uh, we are really talking about i mean even if we talk about that this is not a measure which is going to affect it and and and, and i suppose that the 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 second assumption which was which was sort of made was that uh, that you know that uh, that the that the that the white that the white 500s and the white thousands in particular the white 500s because if you take the informal economy if you take uh, an electrician or a plumber in, in the urban areas a domestic servant and who gets paid maybe you know 800 rupees a day 1000 rupees a day even 2000 rupees a day and some who are paid 5000 6000 rupees a month 
uh, they very often are paid in 500 rupee notes. Uh, all transactions, the fruit seller in, on the pavement has gone and paid cash in the morning in order to collect the fruits and then accumulates cash till the evening and then goes back the next morning. And these people are sitting with, uh, so I don't even know, you know, these estimates we have, you know, uh, what about so many percent, you know, 8 percent, whatever it is, and another 17 percent of, of these kinds of currencies, these notes in circulation of the total currency in circulation that uh, this is actually held by people whom you are trying to hit, whether they be terrorists or, ter you know, the financiers of terrorists or black money holders. So what you've done is you've frozen the payments and settlement system in a part of the economy, which is a part of the economy which actually is not where these people whom you claim you're trying to touch sit. And therefore, this is an extremely regressive measure. It's, it's actually a measure which is which is unconsciously or because you don't care um, has actually you know hit these people and I don't believe again that there was no inkling of this that there was no inkling that this is going to create chaos that you know just because you've set it set a whole process of transition till December 30th that there isn't going to be a period of two three four weeks over which there's going to be complete chaos and as I said freezes the payments and settlement system in this part of the economy. This is the part of the economy which is really the low end of the economic sector, which is the poorer sections who don't use credit cards, who don't use electronic transfers yeah. and so on. So yeah. these are the yeah. sections and, 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 and whose transaction be. values in a day or in a week are not so, are not so large and therefore and, and 500 rupees, I mean you're talking about when the last time we had a demonetization, you're talking about 1000 rupee notes at those at those prices. A 500 rupee note at today's prices is, is, is it's, it's just absurd to think that you can actually, you know, target it as part of something which should be structurally, you know, targeted in terms of sectors with the economy transactions. You, you know, you, you do something about registering properly um, prices of, of real estate, for example. Uh, so therefore, I think that this, is, this was just a dramatic gesture. This was hype. Uh, partly because of the failure of the earlier measure of trying to get people to actually voluntarily declare paying the penalty, paying the tax, uh, black, black money and nothing much came out of it. Partly because this whole threat that you're going to bring back all this black money and put it into people's bank accounts hasn't worked. And partly because elections are coming, you just needed some kind of dramatic gesture, the, the hype typical of this government. And um, I think that they, they are so... Uh, so callous that they are not looking at the implications of it for a section of the population which is already at the margins. So this is more in terms of what you're saying, managing the optics yeah. that we are doing something about black money, hoardings going all, all over the country saying brave steps, yeah. congratulations yeah. to the PM and so on. So you really think that this is, it's not that black money is being addressed, but it's really the media and the people yeah. who are and, being and addressed. You, and you throw in a little bit of corruption and terrorism for good measure, you know. I'll come to this terrorist money or the fake currency issue which has been raised. Now, if you want to address fake currency, there's no need to freeze it for a day like we have done. We can actually change old notes over a period of yeah, time sure. yeah. and that will take out the fake currency. And, in, and you know, okay, so if, you, if, you, if you're talking about people who, who, let's say, are counterfeiting currency in large measure and you you tell them that, listen, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to you know, get you to come and exchange. So obviously, they're not going to come. What do they lose? They lose the cost of production of counterfeit currency when they've already put cu currency at, and you know made made a lot of money implicitly by by putting in counterfeit currency, and they they sort of uh, you know retool maybe the same equipment and counterfeit the new currency. So so I mean there isn't even a loss of any significant measure other than for, for them. Some, yeah. For them. So, so if you, the argument would be that there's a large amount of counterfeit currency going around, so we want to take them out of circulation. But for that you don't need such a freeze that yeah, can be done over yeah, a period and, of. And yeah, and in any case, uh, you know it, this is not going to prevent a new ba batch of counterfeit currency coming in once um, you you know. And and I I do think for example you know the reason they chose not to put out the thousand rupee note. Uh, is uh, is not because of the fact that uh, you know they had some. It's just that they are not even able to think of ways of generating very quickly a thousand rupee note. So people are complaining that you go and you you know you you want to take out a certain amount of money from your bank account, and when you take it, you're getting two thousand rupee note. And when you go to the market to do transactions, the only way you can do transactions if those people have hundred rupee notes to give you back or are willing to give up the few five hundred rupee notes that they had. So even, you know, even doing transactions, so 
as I said, this this fruit vendor, if he's stuck with this two thousand rupee note and he goes there, and you know he might have a problem, you know, making his multiple choices of what he wants to buy from different sources. So it's completely, it's 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 um, you know, it's thoughtless and it's it's shocking that uh, the state of our nation is such that uh, you know senior bureaucrats, uh, top members of the of the central bank that they can't actually put their foot down and say listen this is this is uh, you know what i don't know a sort of almost tuglaki in a measure you know to do but this tuglak kind of was quite uh, imaginative <laughs> he, the first <laughs> person in the world to introduce paper you currency see, i think it's wrong <laughs> to call it call <laughs> him by the way we do <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> like, true the, this is really it seems a measure which is yeah, bereft yeah, of common yeah, sense yeah, absolutely. if yeah. i may say so you know the last point is that apart from the optics there is also this other issue that there's 85 percent of the currency today which is in circulation is 500 rupees and 1000 rupee notes. So does it to be in a huge dislocation? It's 85 percent of the value in okay. terms of in terms yeah. of the percentage of votes. It's it's I mean, I mean not votes and notes. notes. No, it's, no. it's 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 much smaller, but it's 80, 85, 86 percent of the of value. the total value of, of the, the of, cash of, of in, in circulation. circulation. Exactly. So essentially, you are hitting. You are trying to take out 85 percent of the cash value in circulation is the huge dislocation yes, and and, and you and you obviously are not able to put it back in time which is what i mean by saying you're freezing the payments and settlement system so you know, it's, it's, it's contra it has a contractionary effect and that contractionary effect i think is the burden of it is is regressive in terms of the distribution across segments of the population so it's going to fall yeah. much more yeah, on the yeah, because the sections. people who can do their electronic transactions and so on fall in a different category despite all this Jandan accounts and so on. The only other thing is that the realty companies seem to have suffered more because that's one sector which is yeah, more absolutely. sensitive to yeah, yeah, hoarded cash. Yeah, absolutely, value, absolutely. Absolutely. But apart from that, yeah. it has not really yeah, affected yeah, any other right. sector. That's, that's, Thank you, uh, Chandru, for being with us and hope to discuss these issues more with you as the time passes. We'll review the current measures and other measures the government is taking with respect to black money and see where it goes. Thank you very much. That's all the time we have for News Click today. Keep watching further episodes of News Click.